Well, Stephen Yates joins me now, former international security official at the White House. Hello, Stephen. Hello, it's good to be with you. Hi, and Professor Scott Lucas is here as well, an expert on US politics at Birmingham University. Hello, Scott. Good morning. Hi. Uh, Steve, first, Stephen, first of all, um, I guess the key question here is whether Congress will, will back Obama. Do you think they will? There's no guarantee in that. The Congress really has a number of questions, I think, in both parties. Uh, the partisan lineup of the Congress is well known, divided the Senate being controlled by Democrats, the House by Republicans. Uh, but when it comes to intervention, both parties are weary of intervention, the cost of them. And there's a lot of questions about what comes after this strike. Just because the president may intend for a one-off strike doesn't mean that Assad and his allies will just take it and not respond and not expand the conflict. There's a lot of concern about that. The, the decision to go to Congress is clearly influenced by what happened in the UK. In fact, uh, Obama actually referenced it, uh, th that move, in, in his speech. Um, is it being seen in the US as a sign of strength that he's, that he's taking this route or, or, or one of weakness? I think it was taken pretty much as a sign of weakness. I thought that there was no indication the administration was going to go this route until after that vote. Uh, and I think the president himself, frankly, had been ambivalent about intervention. A lot of this policy had been driven by the secretary of state, who has somewhat different views, it seems. And, and Scott Lucas, the, how this plays domestically is one thing in the United States. And certainly domestically here, um, both Ed Miliband and David Cameron are trying to take advantage of the situation and claim credit for this. But what about internationally? What are the ramifications if, for example, Congress say no and there are no strikes? What message does that send? Do, is that... A kind, is that the beginning of the end of America's role as the world's policeman? Well, I don't want to shift the discussion, but I think the message has already been sent uh, because Obama effectively kicked the can down the road uh, last night. Um, it, it'll be at least two weeks before the U.S. could take any military action since the Congress doesn't reconvene until September 9th and then would debate the issue. And frankly, I find that baffling because uh, if the president was going to go to war with Syria in the sense of sending ground troops in or having major sustained airstrikes, then yes, perhaps he needs a resolution for Congress. But to support a limited airstrike against a chemical weapons attack that took 10, 10 days ago, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Apparently, Obama made the decision only on uh, Friday night, very late. And I, I agree with you know Stephen's assessment. It makes the U.S. appear weak, and it puts them on the sidelines in the Syrian conflict. Yeah, um, the the Independent have a very effective front page this morning. The Independent on Sunday, they've got a series of a montage of pictures from the from the crisis, and their headline is "The Finger on the Trigger uh, Pauses." Um, and and it, and it would seem so, Scott. So we're talking about international repercussions. What do you think uh, the Syrians will be making of this? I think the Assad regime will be breathing a sigh of relief um, because over the last few days. They've been scrambling, uh, trying to put out basically almost desperate propaganda that it was the insurgents who carried out the attack. Uh, they've been moving military supplies and uh, troops around the country, trying to put them into shelter. They actually had pulled back from their own campaigns against the insurgency, uh, in a sense, because they were worried they were about to be hit. Now I think they'll be able to go back on the offensive if they wish, at least in certain areas like the Damascus suburbs. And I do think that for the moment, it appears that they can actually even go as far as using chemical weapons and not fear an immediate pushback from the international community. Uh, Stephen Yates, if if um, the vote goes against Obama, I suppose he will have to draw a new red line, won't he? He'll have to set another standard by which he'll take action. Or, or could he just could he act independently as commander in chief? Could he still authorize a strike even if Congress say no? Well, his statement today was accurate that he did, he does have the authority to, to give this order now. He does not need a resolution to, to do this kind of a limited strike. Uh, but I think the reality is that no one believes this could just be a sterile limited strike and that be the end of it. Uh, you're intervening in a civil war whether you say that you are or you are not. And there's just no way people believe that there wouldn't be a deeper commitment that followed. Scott, just just very briefly, um, I wonder if some part of this decision by Obama was prompted by the by the by the state of the coalition he was able to put together. Obviously, the UK pulled out. He he had the support of France and Turkey. Did, did do you think he saw that as potentially not strong enough to carry the message? Maybe Obama did, but the administration didn't. Um, the, the statement, you know, on Friday night by John Kerry, the U.S. Secretary of State was that the United States did not have to wait for the United Nations Security Council. In fact, did not have to wait for any other country. Certainly it would like support with this action, but that they were, in effect, prepared to go it alone, or at least, say, with a country like France. And uh, it, it's just simply that Obama, for whatever reasons, whether he suddenly thought about the British vote, 
he pulled the rug out from under that uh, 24 hours later. And I just want to end. Uh, Stephen Yates, thank you very much indeed for taking part.